I want to focus and concentrate on my contribution to the debate tonight to the role of the Green Party in this Government and what we intend doing in the next two years. And I do so with remembering the critically back two and a half years ago when we joined the Government, agreed a programme for Government, the leader of the European Green Party, whose assessment would be well informed because we are in Government in many countries in Europe, said that our programme for Government was the greenest programme that they had seen. And Greens aren't a Government except in Europe, so we're at the centre of the Green transition. They said it was the most extensive, most ambitious Green programme that any Green Party in Government had promised to try and deliver. And in recent weeks, when it came to discussion about ministerial places, we were very clear in saying we want to retain the positions we have because I believe our ministers are working effectively, are delivering and can do huge progress or good for the country in the next two years. It takes two and a half years even to learn the ropes, I think, of how department works, how the system works. My colleagues have done that and they now have to focus on using that experience to deliver. I want to set out some of the various aspects of the work that we have to do. Firstly on climate, and I listened with respect to Deputy Batchik and others, uh, Deputy Murphy and others who raised the issue of concern, which I share, that our climate emissions are still rising. Reading it in the media today, there's fair commentary. It's a concern at a time when we need to be reducing by the likes of 5% per annum. Last year it increased by that amount. That has to turn around. That will turn around. Yes, it will. We do not have an option. We do not have an option in Irish law. The law we've written is one of the strongest climate laws in the world. We do not have an option because our, you heard President von der Leyen speaking here only two or three weeks ago, saying this is the centre to European strategy and a whole swathe of European law which is steering us in that direction. We have to deliver on that ambition. And even more importantly, I believe the Irish business community, but more importantly the Irish people, want and will do this. It takes time to turn this a complete strip of state, all of us around, but we will do it. What's the best way? We learnt a lot in COVID that government works best when it works in teams outside the normal silos of government departments. So we are busy establishing task force teams that bring in academic expertise, that bring in the agencies and other government departments, that act transparency by going on a regular basis to our national climate dialogues where we share openly what's been done. In offshore wind, which is the moonshot opportunity, as the Taoiseach said, it is the potential, the really big potential for us. It is equivalent to what happened when the state was founded and we set up Arden to This week, we will see, start to see the consents being provided for the first phase of offshore projects. Next some spring, subject to them going through an auction process that we are establishing now, they will go into the planning system. The planning constraint is the biggest. We have to expand Borpanola dramatically and speed up our whole planning process because it's killing us at the moment in housing and environment in a whole range of different ways. And I believe we can and will do that. Phase two, and all this is going to happen in the lifetime of this government, will start to see the second phase of projects in the southeast and further in the east, and then also into Cork as well as Shannon, south and west. Taking into account the best environmental analysis, you have to get the environmental planning of this right for it to work. It's the biggest risk, the biggest constraint. And in the lifetime of this government, we will set us on the course towards delivering what we call the enduring regime, the really large scale of power that particularly exists to the west and the northwest, and design ways in which we can catch, store, share, and ship that energy. And we're right in the middle of doing that, and it will be delivered. It's not just offshore, we will also, the scale of the challenge to meet the targets. It does mean we have to deliver as much solar energy in the next three years as the amount of renewable power we rolled out in the last 20. I know that sounds impossible, but that is what we have to do. Every school building, tens of thousands of houses, farmers involved, 
backed up by batteries and pump storage and a whole range of other balancing capabilities where our, our business community will have a central role in being part of this new balancing energy system. And we're not the only ones doing it. The Americans are going at it at speed, as the Chinese are doing more than the rest of the world combined. All our colleagues in Europe are doing it. We're in a race to deliver this. And we will, and we have, in my mind, in our department, and in the agencies, and in the companies, and in the Irish people, we have the capability of doing this. In agriculture, it's the same scale of change. It's diversification into agroforestry, that new mechanisms of riparian forestry, into anaerobic digestion. Who mentioned that earlier on today? Deputy McNamara is not here now, but absolutely, that's what we need to, to uh, deliver. Yes, we need to change forestry, and those failing licensing system has been changed, and we will deliver it. We switch to tillage, we switch to organic, and that's happening. Look at the applications for the new environmental agri scheme. Blow up way beyond what was expected. Look at the farm visits that are taking place when organic farmers open their farms and farm visits. Hundreds of Irish farmers going along because they realise I could save money here. I don't have to spend so much on expensive fertiliser. Deputy Lowry, absolutely. We start by listening to everyone, by respecting everyone. And also, absolutely in the conviction, every place matters, every person matters, and the Irish people, country people, much as much as city, want to do this, young and old. In transport, yesterday our task force, this agency system of multiple agencies met for, I don't know, the sixth, seventh time. We have 35 Pathfinder projects which have to be delivered by the end of 2025 because there has to be a dramatic shift, as our climate plan would show next week, bringing the scale of uh, being a completely different switch towards public transport, particularly rural connecting bus services, which are being rolled out around the country and are a huge success. Our young people are turning to the rural bus services in a way no one could ever have expected. It's happening. And those Pathfinder projects, those Pathfinder projects are the, showing the system showing our local government system how we can act fast, how we can use budgets well, how we can actually get local support for what's going to be difficult decisions. Because it's reallocating space, it's doing things differently, it's taking out parking, it is creating high quality bus corridors and other mechanisms to save us from gridlock as well as reducing our emissions. I'm sorry for going on for so long on climate, but it's important. I want to briefly, if I can, first of all, salute what I think my colleague, Minister Roderick O'Gorman, has been doing an incredible job. An incredible job, Roderick, in actually managing how we looked after 70,000 people. And it's not easy. No one wants anyone in a tent at all, least of all Roderick and his team. But they've done everything to do this in a compassionate way, and we can't stop. As President von der Leyen said, we need that stubborn optimism where, where we do take more. And we don't know how long this war is going to go on. There's no certainty in this. But closing our door is not an option. And I have every confidence in Roderick and his team to deliver on that. And to take up what the Taoiseach said earlier on, a focus on children in this country. In changing, which he's doing, our childcare system. And that people will see that next month when the cuts in childcare fees come through, thanks to the work he has done. And we will not stop there. As the Taoiseach said, let's focus on that original promise in our constitution and get it right in how we raise and help young families raise children. Catherine, that critical job I mentioned earlier about the cultural values, it is also about bricks and mortar. It is about the National Concert Hall. It is about the Abbey. It is about the same in, all over the country, getting the institutions right. But the institutions also have to be What's the culture online? Because the cynicism you talk about, Tisha, gets fostered at the moment because our journalist system is in real crisis, because it's all online and this divisive, hostile form of politics. So her work in some of the online commissions and the media commissions and the work and support for the media industry is going to be critical. Pippa Hackett in my mind, has been a huge support for Minister McConnell. And we've worked well, Charlie, in terms of it's not easy, 
because it is change, and it's big change, but I believe we have huge assets in paper hackers who has already turned around that foreign free licensing system, who has already shown how in government you can actually turn what was a disastrous system into a highly effective system. And we need to do it. We need to do it further. The most important, I'll finish on this, the most important in my mind project that we have to do in government, which was in our programme for government and now we deliver on, is the land use review. It's the really high level overview as to what's happening in our country in the destruction of nature, in the pollution of our waters, in the ongoing carbon emissions that we have to start planning now. It's not just climate. There are three ecological crises facing climate, biodiversity loss and pollution. And all three in our country we have to face. That recent APA figure showing the southeast of our country, the water is saturated with nitrogen. That has to stop. It's not just that our waters run free, but they're clean at the same please, time. Please, it's what we need deputy, to deliver. Please, we are halfway order. through that project in this government. We have done the first phase in the evidence base. Now we will do the phase working in the same way where we listen to different communities, listen to different sectors, listen to academics in the way that Malcolm Newton is going to deliver on the planning, the marine protected areas, science-based ecological understanding at the centre of what we do. That's what we're going to deliver in the next two years.